Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, day number three, PDAC 2024 in Toronto, and we're going to start the interview session today with Endeavor Silver, and Dan Dixon, the CEO, is here with me. Dan, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> yeah, great to see you in your yeah home base, I would just say, in Canada, finally, because normally we see us at some fairs in Europe or via Zoom or whatever. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, it's always nice to stay in Canada. Yeah. I mean, we're obviously on the other coast, and I'm excited how warm it is in Toronto this week. Unbelievable. It's, it's yeah, been, uh, crazy. We can walk like this. It's Defin the warmest PDAC ever. De definitely <laughs> happy about that. In that sense, I love global warming. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so Endeavor Silver, I think uh, I'm a shareholder of the company also, I should say that, because uh, it looks like my chart was completely correct. I bought it at the turning point. Oh, good for so you. So that's really nice. Yeah, yesterday you had again a good run up. Um, for sure, gold and silver prices are really moving. So what's your view on that as you are a silver gold producer? Yeah, I mean, obviously, 2023 was kind of a tough year for the precious metals. Mm -hmm. Prices were fine. Um, ultimately, all our margins got squeezed with the fact that all our input costs have gone mm -hmm. up. So you kind of eventually expected an adjustment in the in the gold price and ultimately the silver price. I'm glad to see gold's run through 2100. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important for the silver price. We've always historically seen silver lag gold. So gold's going to move first and hopefully mm -hmm. it makes new highs and at that point I think silver will make its move and, and flip from effectively being an industrial metal to mm -hmm. a precious metal again. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a massive growth from an industrial standpoint in, in, in silver, and that's what's held its price where it's at. Mm -hmm. But we haven't even come close to all-time highs in silver. So I think it's a next couple of years should be very positive in our yeah, space. Absolutely. And I think we are also entering, not entering, but we have definitely the sixth consecutive year in a deficit market. So from where does that come and why is, has the silver price? has not risen further. I mean, if I calculate yeah. the five years to, uh, together with 680 million ounces, for this year we have uh, seen a uh, presentation from Peter Kraut, okay. one of the top silver guys here in Toronto. Um, he predicted like a deficit of something like 180, 190 million again. Yeah. So that raises, raises the question, of course, why is silver not going further? Yeah, I think it's a function of what's above ground and, and silver is such a special metal in the fact that it's got the industrial component mm -hmm. and the monetary component and the last time we saw the big run to silver to fifty dollars there was a, a larger monetary component in the fact that industrial was lower so we've seen massive growth in photophotelics mm -hmm. uh, and the amount of use from a solar panel standpoint mm -hmm. uh, growth in evs growth in flat screen panels mm -hmm. with regards to your cell phones or your televisions mm -hmm. or, or computer screens uh, and that's grown significantly so when the monetary part of the silver kicks in again you're going to have more juice for less amounts of silver. Mm -hmm. And I think what's ultimately held it down is the fact that we've probably had some outflows from above ground and, and going into the industrial side of things. Mm -hmm. But again, when the story comes from a precious metal standpoint, mm -hmm. that pool of silver is a lot smaller than it was in 2011. And I think you're going to get exponential growth in the price mm -hmm. uh, when, when the investing public gets back into silver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I think also with the paper silver, I think it's approximately 1 billion ounces per day traded. Yeah. Yeah. So this is like, it's paper, it's like blah, 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 gone away. Yeah, it's paper. <laughs> it's very difficult to yeah. explain. It's not the supply-demand stuff that we learn through economics in school. But at the end of the day, I think the monetary side of things is very hard to explain. That's all psychology. And it, it, it's all dependent on where we think currencies are, the deficits mm -hmm. and debts that we hold as countries. And mm -hmm. it's clear with where interest rates are, mm -hmm. uh, the debt levels aren't sustainable. Yeah. And, and that discussion is going to come back into the mm -hmm. fold, be part of the, the whole narrative in our economies over the next two, three years. And I think that's going to be the monetary side mm -hmm. of thing. For gold, like I say, gold to move first, maybe through 2,400, approaching 3,000. And when you see that, the silver is going to hit its monetary side of things from a precious metal standpoint mm -hmm. and hopefully make new highs as well. Absolutely. Super. So you are a silver gold producer, of course. Uh, I think uh, you have now also the, the, this year is like a transition year, like a turning year for you yeah. with Terronera. Everything is on track for yeah, November? Yeah, everything's on track. We put out a news release in January of this year. Uh, highlighting kind of increased costs. So we went from a $230 million build mm. to $270 million build. And that's from a number of inputs, steel, mm -hmm. uh, more mining equipment to mm -hmm. make sure we sustain 2,000 tons per day, some work around our tailings facility that ultimately needed a key. Uh, but I think the positive from our news release is the fact that we remain on time. So Terranera is scheduled to come for commissioning in Q4 of 2024. Super. 
with production in 2025. Mm -hmm. uh, as you say, it's a transition year for Endeavor. We built our company with the Guanas City and Bolognito vines mm -hmm. that are still in operation. Mm -hmm. uh, they're long in the tooth. There have been higher costs. Our margins have been squeezed there, like we touched on at the beginning of the interview. Mm -hmm. Terranera for us completely changes Endeavor. It puts us as one of the lowest cost producing asset or companies and ultimately mm -hmm. Terranera itself is one of the lowest cost producing silver assets mm -hmm. in our space. All the gold production will will cover the costs and the silver effectively comes from Could free. Be better. It, yeah. it really will be a phenomenal mm -hmm. asset for us when, when we bring it in. Compared to my um, to my uh, calculations, when I look at AIC, then for the whole group, like yeah. Yeah, I think there is a chance that you maybe come down then, but to what, $12, $13? No, that's exactly yeah. right. This year for just Guanas and Bolognitos, we're projecting 22 to 23 all in sustaining mm. costs. So effectively, mm. the, the cash flow that we're getting at Guanas and Bolognitos is paying for our g &A out of Vancouver, mm. our exploration expenditures for mm. the year, but there's not much more for the shareholders. Yeah. Um, Terranera itself will do $55 million of after-tax cash flow at $23 mm. silver and $1,800 gold. Um, so at these prices, it's significant. And then from an all-in mm. Sustaining cost standpoint, it takes us from twenty-two down to thirteen dollar range, mm -hmm. um, which is obviously phenomenal from a cash flow and managing mm -hmm. the business and trying to reinvest that and to grow the company. Absolutely, reinvest. That's a good uh, topic. What's going on? Because I think Paral was also one of the projects which might be in the play in the future. Yeah, we've got two great projects in behind Terranair. One's called Paral. It's up in the state of Chihuahua. We've held that since twenty sixteen. We've mm -hmm. advanced it. Uh, we've been trying to grow the resource about 60 million ounces of silver equivalent. Nice. It's mostly silver, a little bit of lead and zinc. So we don't have any other base metals mm -hmm. in our portfolio. Uh, but the more exciting projects, the Pitheria project that we bought in 2022. Yeah, Pitheria you know. uh, yeah. is in the yeah. state of Durango. Yeah. It's it's one of the world's largest undeveloped silver deposits. Mm -hmm. uh, we've defined over 550 million ounces of silver plus zinc plus lead. So mm -hmm. the deposit is about 60% silver in, from a revenue standpoint, 30% mm -hmm. zinc and 10% lead. Uh, the history of Pitheria was discovered in 2002, and with the big run-up of silver to $50, it was mm -hmm. looked at and con conceptualized, and a feasibility study was put out on an open pit operation. Mm -hmm. Right now, Mexico open pits aren't exactly in favor, uh, and ultimately, the way the way we saw it, and when we purchased it, we considered it as an underground operation. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, SSR, who had made the discovery and did a lot of the work, they had invested 145 million dollars into the project. Wow. Had originally c conceptualized the project as an underground operation, mm -hmm. which is what we know. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to look at it from an underground standpoint. And hopefully, that becomes our development asset after Terranera's oh, production. Nice. Wow! So that would be something by the end of the decade, then. Uh, by the end of the decade, yes, absolutely. Uh, hopefully even sooner than that. But yeah. We've got a lot of work to do there. We're, like I say, mm -hmm. hopefully in 2024, by the end of this year, we get through some scoping studies and figure out if we want to put this through a PEA or PFS mm -hmm. uh, so we can talk about it more in the market. Super. Perfect. Then wish you well for that. Yeah. And uh, I would say let's rock Terronera first and uh, make some money here. Yeah, absolutely. We got to execute <laughs> on Terranera this year. Super. Thank you very much then. Thank you. Great. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, there was Dan Dixon, the CEO of a and Endeavor Silver. And yeah, you heard that Terranera is full on track. The commissioning starts in November this year with production then in the first quarter of 2025. That's exactly how we want to see it. And if you have a look at the presentation of Endeavor Silver, actually the AISC, there are minus 40 cents for the ounce of silver then. And this is amazing because the gold is paying for everything. And that's exactly where I see the joker in Endeavor Silver. That's why I bought the stock at $2. Now we are $2.40 approximately today. Um, still fine. My, uh, my price target uh, in the chart is easily six to seven Canadian dollars. So lots of room to make some money and great company, fully back on track. Check it out. Thanks for watching us and bye-bye from PDAC 2024.